Hello everyone and welcome back to my hard time series in Kerbal Space Program 0 .90 Beta. In this episode I originally intended to take the Derek shuttle up to the station but then I decided to take a peek at the mission control to see what contracts we've got. We've got uh, a few planet flags and, and explore Tylo but uh, what really caught my eye was this build a new orbital station around Joule. Now you know for the Derek shuttle to really be able to go around the, the solar system, uh, the Kerbal system, uh, we will need stations all over the place and so any time when we can get a build new orbital station around Ike for instance that's another one that caught my eye and around Joule uh, we should probably take them so let's do that let's take the Ike one let's take the Joule one the Joule one requires facilities supporting at least 17 Kerbals which is quite a thing but uh, yeah well we'll we'll need uh, big facilities so let's take a look at the planetary situation to see why the Jewel one was a little bit more important to me than the Ike one. And uh, that's all due to the alignment right now. We're actually just a little bit beyond the point where we should transfer to Jewel. Jewel should be around here, a uh, 96 degree angle from Kerbin. And so we're a little bit beyond that. But I think that uh, we could probably still hit it at this angle. It'll take a little bit more delta V than normal. But, uh, yeah, I think that is a doable transfer. And you'll see uh, Duna is not in the right location at all. So it'll take us quite a while to get to uh, the right phase angle for Duna to transfer a station to Ike. But we've got the contract, so we'll do that when the time comes. But let me uh, take a look at the VAB and see to what extent I can build a good station for Jewel. Okay, I just uh, tested out a theory, and the theory accidentally worked. Um, the game is letting me do this. And of course, these little uh, crew cabins have a capacity of four. Now, it's possible this intersection could explode. Maybe I should use offset a little bit. Hmm, there's got to be a way of making this look like so it doesn't look... I mean, it looks really neat and tight, of course, but I don't like the overlap. This will definitely be a way to get 17 Kerbals on pretty easily. We'll have a capacity of 20, actually. Hmm, let me think about this, and I'll come back to you with uh, what I come up with for the solution. But definitely the way to go is using these little crew cabins. Okay, here's what I've come up with so far. You can see I sort of uh, rotated out these sections so that these guys are a little bit further out and then don't don't touch each other. Well, don't uh, overlap each other anyway. But that caused a problem for creating the rest of the unit. And to solve that, I've put fuel, attached fuel tanks to one of these roughly in the center of the whole thing. Not roughly, actually. I think it's pretty much exactly in the center and uh, use that to attach the big fuel tank here and I've had to add struts just in case because it feels like it might be a little bit wobbly otherwise and so lots of struts involved and uh, especially struts between this big fuel tank and these pods on the outside which are actually uh, bearing the mass of all this and contain the controller very important uh, put antennas there to fulfill that contract. Uh, we've got big docking ports placed here because it's closer to the center of mass than if I put them lower. Uh, otherwise, of course, they'd look better if they were lower. But uh, I, I unlocked the radial attachment points, by the way. For some reason, they hadn't been unlocked. Uh, so I unlocked those. And I have to build the rest of the launcher now because... Well, we, we haven't got a way to launch this uh, behemoth yet. Let me tuck these in a little bit more. Well, well that's a little bit better. All right, so let me work on the launcher. This itself already has uh, 5,700 meters per second of delta V, uh, at least. A little bit more than that, probably. Um, you might wonder why am I using eight, uh, not eight, four of the nukes Obviously, fewer nukes would be better, less mass. It doesn't uh, help delta V to carry more, but I, I want the thrust to weight ratio. Um, it, even as it is right now, it's got about a thrust to weight ratio of 0.3. Uh, so, not the greatest situation in terms of making the transfers quickly. So, that's why I wanted more of them, even though it's uh, just added mass. Alright, so let me uh, build the rest of our vehicle. 
Okay, so I think we're over budget. Uh, basically, we got 130000 as the advance on this contract. And this is going to cost 300000 to launch. Even if I don't make it reusable, reusability would actually cost... Uh, would have a higher upfront cost. And of course, the question is whether I could actually recover it after that. And with something this heavy, I uh, until we get the other system the with the station refueler all worked out, I don't think I can uh, do a reusable system with something with an 80-ton payload. That's uh, going a little bit far until I work out the kinks in the in the current project. So I think. Uh, this will have to do. Uh, fortunately, if we fulfill the contract, we'll get much more than 300,000, but that requires this to be completely successful. And so that's the trick. I've got I've got the docking port antenna power. I've got uh, solar panels. I couldn't action group the solar panels because I have not uh, actually got the action groups unlocked. So that's a little bit, bit of a hassle. But otherwise, uh, the boosters do separate. They are um, asparagus staged, uh, so they feed into the center tank. We've got the big engine there. Uh, plenty of thrust for this, uh, more than is necessary. But uh, I didn't want to belabor the fuel situation. We've got enough delta V to get this into orbit without using the nukes. So, yeah, as long as everything works out, it should be fine. I'm not going to try and... S oh, what if the launch pad explodes? Hmm. That's a good question. I hope that's fixed in 0.90. I've, I, I think I've got the stock bug fix modules in. Anyway, uh, let's find out. We've got some fun buffer at least. And uh, this will be an interesting contract to fulfill. Oh, oh, what? Uh, hmm. I think I need more struts on the boosters. They, they, they wiggled just now. Okay, let's uh, let's not take any chances. Let me recover vessel. That's one benefit to putting the launch clamps on the boosters is that you do get to see whether things are too loose or something. So I'm going to add struts. No, no, not not to the launch clamps. <sighs> okay, it looked a little bit more stable this time. All right, SAS on, throttle up. Very expensive mission. Let's hope this works. Okay, launch pad did not explode. Very important. Center engine is overheating a bit. That's fine. We can throttle down. Actually, what we can do right now is uh, thrust limit the center engine instead. Its ISP isn't as good as the main sails right now. That should be better. Well, looks pretty stable, but now it's time for the turn. Okay, main cell's about to run out, so I'm gonna go full throttle there. And, alright, let's set. Separation is good. Now, oh, let's follow prograde a little bit better. Seems like we're losing velocity just a bit. And the overheating is still happening. Probably won't reach detrimental proportions, but better safe than sorry. How horrible is it going to be to turn this thing? Uh, pretty horrible. You can see my yaw is full right now. I'm trying my best to turn it towards the prograde vector. But, could be worse. Could be total lack of control. There's no RCS on the station, by the way. 
And of course, to some extent, a station looks a lot more like a ship than a station, and that's because it might need to relocate a few times around Jewel. Uh, might want to send uh, Kerbals around to some of the moons. And of course, it's got those nuclear engines, so so they can do that, and then they can do science. Lots of biomes around the Jewel system now in point nine zero, so we'll want to take advantage of that. So that's why nukes, that's why lots of fuel, well of course lots of fuel also to refuel stuff. Okay, let me sure we're safe. So let's go for the jewel transfer. Let's see, we've got some fuel left in this stage. That'll be a good start. You gotta love the whole encountering jewel thing, it's not the hardest thing to do. Easiest interplanetary encounter even if you're off the timing. Looks like we'll get to correct inclination right here at uh, Kerbin instead of doing it uh, all at the sending node so that'll be good. Okay a thousand kilometers away from Joule with a mid-course plane change of 33 meters per second and the initial burn of 1,953. Okay let's turn to it and we'll probably be doing most of the burn with the nuclear stage, so it's going to take us a long time. But we can't uh, start too soon because we'll be too far away from prograde vector to make it efficient. Probably better to uh, burn a little bit and then go around, but let's try it. Let's see here. So eight minutes could be okay might be a bit much but I'll go for it we'll see how much we deviate, we'll correct it afterwards okay coming up on the end of this burn, I've extended the uh, the mini solar panels we've got. I'm surprised we still haven't unlocked the large solar panels. Hopefully from this contract we'll get enough science to unlock that uh, those solar panels so that we can put a proper solar array on this using these big docking ports. Some sort of solar array would be nice. Then again that'll kill the sort of ship-like look of it. So I'll have to think about that. Maybe not a very big solar array, and maybe two of them, one on either side, will make it look about right. Let's see what's happening with our orbit. Oh, it doesn't look too far off. Oh, wait, it's looking far off when it comes to this side. I think we've gone too far. Yeah. Okay. Well, hold on a sec. Let's get rid of the mid-course adjustment for now and see what we're doing here. So obviously I kept this unmanned until we were sure that it would work. No point uh, risking Kerbal lives, of course. we can. And besides, we've got a transfer vehicle. We've got the Derek shuttle. So we can use that to transfer up to six Kerbals to the station. Well, really four, un unless you want to keep the Thing unmanned. I, mean, I guess we could put a probe core in the cargo bay. So yeah, we could transfer all six Kerbals to the station. Okay, mid course adjustment gets us to 67 kilometers, which is of course too low. Uh, but uh, let's go for it. Uh, just 31.1 meters per second now. We can align with it and then exit Kerbin's sphere of influence. No problem pointing this away. Where are you, Kerbin? There you are. Okay, station is on its way out. Let's get this mission done in this episode, and then we'll have a jewel station. And that will be a huge positive, and lots of science, hopefully. Okay, here we go for mid-course plane change. Okay, well, that's still a little bit lower than we need, but we can correct that. We'll have plenty of time in the dual system to correct that, I'm sure. We proceed. Okay, here we are in the dual system, and looks like the crash course. 
Not a surprise. Yep. We seem to be going around the right way, at least. That's a good thing. Uh, let me check uh, error breaking calculator to see what altitude we really should be aiming at. Actually, we, we need a periapsis around Joule at least, so let me find the appropriate radial vector here. So far, no horrible wiggles from this thing, so that's good, uh, given the weird way I attached stuff. Let's go to 200. Uh, so, we'll call that 203 for error breaking calculator. Hmm, it wants us at 111,000 for the apoapsis I selected. Seems a bit close, doesn't it? Well, anyway, uh, let's get a little bit closer before we adjust this, because it's too hard to do from out here. I'm gonna go 112.5, and then I'll correct as necessary. Might need to avoid uh, possible leaf uh, orbital issue, because uh, we don't want to, right now, be uh, encountering Leif's orbit, otherwise we're gonna have weird perturbations for the station. So uh, the thing is, the station could, I mean, uh, could avoid the other planets by by being in a high inclination, but probably still needs to be closer into Jewel to avoid being perturbed by, uh, especially Leif. Okay, so let's head in. Gonna need to watch out for our solar panels, otherwise we're going to be ending up without power. I definitely like the look of this thing. It does look more like a ship than a station, of course. But looking at it from this angle looks great. I didn't really try to correct inclination. Could have done that. Might be helpful for future missions, but for now we are just getting into dual orbit. No telling what orbit would be optimal right now. Well, if you have to fit uh, 17 to 20 Kerbals in a craft, this is probably the way to do it. Let's verify that our periapsis is correct. Well, 12 uh, 112.5. So a little bit higher than what air breaking calculator gave me. Okay, here come the flame effects. Try and keep it to a retrograde though. This thing isn't the easiest thing to control by any means. Should be balanced. I'm gonna Wow, not very. No, it's deviating. All on its own. Diddle re-entry would not be happy with this. Nope, it wants to go this way around. No, it just wants to flip around and around. Okay. Not good. Okay, well, we're in orbit. And it's going this way. Well, if we end up going too low in orbit, this is the way to point, actually. So yeah, that's a flaw in this design. It doesn't want to go rear end first. Huh. Don't know how the aerodynamics forces it like that, since the uh, bottom end is definitely the heavier part. Wow. At least it's uh, pleasantly shaped for this sort of thing. Very nice envelope for the flames. I guess it is sort of naturally shaped to be going in this way around. Somewhat of a flaw. Not really a blunt body, it's more of a bullet. Okay, well, obviously air braking calculator was right. Uh, it really should have been lower than what I did. But we can correct that. First we need to be able to flip around though. Yeah, I've got the big docking ports on here to expand it as a station, but 
seems almost a shame now looking at it to uh, add stuff to it okay I think I'm gonna go to 12,000 kilometers and call that stable and then have a increase in my periapsis. I'm not gonna make it circular, save fuel for now until I really decide where I want it. Well, let's say uh, 12,500 then. That's fine. Let's go out to apoapsis. Oh, uh, let's extend the solar panels first. I suppose we can open the docking port now. Make it all nice and official that this is a station. I've already set it to be a station, as you can see. Call it Jewel Station, even before we got here. Okay. That, that'll be fine, I think. I don't need to adjust it too much until we decide where exactly we want it. I'll take suggestions on that, by the way. And we've got we've done it. Put a new orbital station around Jewel. Contract fulfilled. Okay. Well, here we are. Plenty of facilities. Uh, oodles of room for fuel. We'll have to see what we do with this. Obviously, the Derek shell should visit at some point, but we'll have to make sure that that's a safe thing to do. Uh, there's also an Ike possible facility around Ike to be built. We'll see about the timing for that. And there's still a matter of getting to the surface of Tylo safely. And now this is going to be a, make that a little bit easier, I think. Okay, let's go back to the Space Center quickly. Okay, so we got our funds back for that very expensive launch and probably a little bit extra. And we've got a lot of science thanks to that launch because it was like 400 science on fulfillment. So 665, let's check the R&D building. So I wanted to look for those uh, those large solar panels, wherever they are. For some reason I don't have these unlocked. Let's unlock those. I thought I unlocked everything, but maybe some things have been changed in 0.90 and that's why I don't have them labeled as unlocked. Yeah, let's purchase that part. Lots of these for some reason. Oh, and well, these uh, make sense. Those were added in 0.90. But some of these, I guess, were just changed. I think their names were changed or something like that. So let's quickly unlock those. Obviously, we can't uh, purchase anything in the top tier until we upgrade the R&D building. But let's see. Where big solar panels? Oh, we have to wait a while to get those, huh? Oh, no, they're here. Why did I think I didn't have them? No, oh, that's a shame. Should have put those on. So I did have them unlocked. Uh, I might be mixing series or something. Okay. Um, ion engine. Could be interesting. This, this is a very lonely piece here. I think uh, there need to be more parts here just to fill that out a bit. For future stations, the cupola module would be nice. And to transfer RCS, we need an RCS module like that. For more sophisticated stations, those would be good. But yeah, I think a cupola module is a thing that uh, we should add to stations. All right, I've convinced myself and we'll immediately unlock all those parts. And I think the other thing that was attractive was the ion engine. We we aren't really doing rovers just yet. We'll uh, get to that, hopefully. But right now we're focusing on the whole system surrounding the Derek shuttle. And uh, having an ion engine will make sure that we can uh, put a probe in the, ion, uh, in the Derek shuttle's bay that can go around quite, uh, quite a long ways. So that is a good thing. All right, so with that, I think we'll leave it here. We've got a station around Jewel. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.